<sighs> I do not know what to post today. If this has ever been you, then this video should help you out because I'm gonna show you exactly how I plan out my social media content. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to show you guys behind the scenes of how I plan out my social media content. Now, let me tell you, it has taken me years and years to figure out a system that actually works for me. And luckily, I was able to learn from my social media manager how to create consistent content and a way to organize it all so I'm not confused looking on my 10,000s of pictures on my phone to find a post for the day. So I'm gonna jump into showing you guys my screen and we're gonna plan out my content for the next two weeks. When it comes to social media content, I know a lot of people that like to plan out their content for the month ahead, which I wish I worked that way, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I do not. I feel like my brain thinks very presently and in the moment and whatever I feel like will work well that week for my posts is what I typically want to talk about. So I typically will plan out my content for one to two weeks ahead of time. That seems to help me out knowing which content I need to make or just knowing what's gonna be going up on which days. So I had a social media manager for about four months and she helped me tremendously, especially on Instagram. That is where she was helping me. She was posting for me Monday through Friday and she ended up helping me grow my account because of the engagement that she was providing for me with my followers and also the consistency. I cannot say that enough. Like consistency is the biggest thing that you need to do for social media, for growing your social media, for reaching potential clients, for all of that, you have to be consistent. And I didn't realize that until I had her come on and I thought if I at least post like four times a week, I should be growing, but it wasn't until I just stayed consistent. And also it wasn't until I made content that I actually knew would help my audience was when I started to see growth. So I feel like I have a really good system now, but also, I wanted to try it out on my own and see if I'm still overwhelmed doing it. And also I'm trying to let off the gas with my clients right now and really transition my business into me managing the education side. So anyway, without further ado, let's hop on over to my screen and I'm going to show you guys how I plan out my content and how I'm actually capturing my videos lately because I've been getting quite a few questions on how I'm getting these nice looking videos that look a little more high quality. So let's jump into it. So I use Airtable right now for planning out my social media content. My social media manager was using Notion and I loved that so much, it was super helpful. However, I have a very big learning curve with Notion and I don't have time to learn that right now. And I know Airtable pretty well already, so that is what I use. I know that people get hung up on which platform to use, but if I could recommend anything, it is to just begin, pick whichever platform you're comfortable on and just start. So this is gonna be an Airtable specific content plan, but feel free to take this exact method and plug it into Notion or whatever platform you use. So this is my tab for my social media content plan. And as you can see, I have different tabs for the February monthly content plan. I have a social media content plan for everything, which will basically just show all the ideas I've dumped in here. This one, you know, I could probably delete this tab. I don't ever really use it. I also have an Instagram feed tab because for a while there, I was really trying to make sure that I had a nice aesthetic looking feed, but I don't really pay attention to this tab anymore. I kind of know the pattern that I post in and that alone just maintains my aesthetic. And then I also have the calendar tab. To be honest guys, the only tabs I use is the February and the all tab to know maybe if I'm stuck on which content to make, that's typically where I will go. So I wanted to show you guys the tabs and like what I have within here. So I have the post date, the post name, the content pillar, which is really nice to have because I have these different content pillars. I have business tips, vlog, redesigns, client work, Adobe Illustrator tutorials. For a while there, my TikTok was doing really well from Adobe Illustrator tutorials, so I made sure to include that one in here. 
but I don't really do that anymore. I typically like to do more vlogs and business tips. So it's nice to have those pillars though, just in case if you are stuck with your content, you know exactly what it is that you can create in place of that. So those are the content pillars. I also have a caption and description area. I have been in this routine lately, guys, and it's been so helpful where I will go to the gym in the morning, I try to go in the mornings, sometimes that doesn't work, but I'll go in the mornings and I will sit in the sauna at the gym we have or I'll walk on the treadmill and I will write my captions typically then. It not only helps me get my steps in, it helps me like get some healthy movement in while just writing from the heart. I sometimes feel like when I sit down to create the content for the week, it's so hard to write caption after caption after caption. I just wanna be able to write the caption when I am feeling the most inspired to do it. And I feel like sometimes that is in the morning when I'm at the gym and when I'm looking for something to do while I'm walking. So that's typically when I'll do it. And then I also have my media and files area and I have a status area. The URL area is typically if I have a freebie that I'm talking about in the content or I'm really pushing a video or something, I like to just include that there so I know exactly where to direct them. But those are the different tabs that I have. So one of the things I wanted to also mention, which this is very important, so listen closely. It's so important to make sure that you have a system like this, not only for the week ahead or two weeks ahead, you want to have a system like this so you can repurpose your content and you have a place to find that content that you can repurpose. So I wanted to mention that because I used to think oh, I can just, you know, post when I want to post, but having a place where all my content is listed out, I have all the captions listed out, will help me so much. If in four or five months I need to repurpose something, I'll be able to go pull it from my February monthly content plan. So I really wanted to make sure to mention that because I think we can get a little easy to skip over steps like this, but for repurposing purposes, definitely make sure to do something like this. So anyway, let's plan out the month of March. So to do that, I'm going to go over here, duplicate the view of February because I really loved how I have this all listed out, but we're going to name this March. March monthly content plan and now i'm going to basically go up here to where it says filtered by post date so this is how i'm able to show just the february posts and just like the march posts now since we're not within this calendar month i'm actually going to just go up here and we'll say is you can either do exact date if you wanted to you can select that but i want to make sure that we have the next month perfect within the next month but it's loading february so let's see but i wanted to show you guys this too so you can see the amount of options that airtable has for you to organize it so you can do the next number of days the next month here let me try this if i were to add a new line here and we say it's in march so it'll load it that way you know, I actually am not mad about it loading in some of those February posts because I'm pretty sure that February, yeah, see March starts on a Friday. So it's just loading in the next month, including those past dates. So that's fine. Let's just list out all of the March dates. I don't post Saturday and Sunday on Instagram. I don't really worry about it. I also should have prefaced this is mainly for Instagram, but I typically will if I have the time, I will try to post all of this on TikTok as well and YouTube Shorts. So this kind of just helps me repurpose it for all of those platforms and it makes it easy for me to just copy and paste everything into whatever platform it is I wanna use. So I'm just loading in all the dates here. So I see the amount of work I have ahead of me. So we just did three, six, I'm gonna do three, seven and we'll just do that amount for now. Actually, let me go until the end of that week. Okay, so we have the whole next week to plan out. So now this comes into the strategy of what it is that I want to talk about next week. So this is why I love having these tabs up here because what I would do is I would go to my YouTube tab and see what it is that I'm gonna be talking about next week. So we are going to be talking about how to create a brand guideline and Airtable for social media, potentially. I might post this one later, 
but I do know that I'm going to be talking about branding guidelines. So just knowing that I am going to want to make a post about that specific video. And luckily my video editors that I'm using right now, they are creating short form content for me. So I know that will be taken care of and I can just upload it in here as soon as I have those. So let's say if I'm posting how to create a brand guideline on the 6th of March, then I'm going to want to most likely talk about it on the 6th of March. So I'm gonna put in here how to create brand guideline and we will do, I'm gonna create a new content pillar. I'll show you guys how to do that. So you just go up top there and you can create a new option. So I'm gonna say YouTube clip save and we will go and pull that. And then I'm also going to probably come up with a caption, like I said, later on, as soon as I know like how the video looks and stuff. But this is where I would create the cover photo. So I'm gonna start from the top here because I wanna make sure that I maintain my pattern and my aesthetic of everything. So it is kind of nice to know what it is that I posted in February before I post this next one in March. So I know what I left off on, whether that's a text cover photo or a photo cover photo. <laughs> um, if you go look at my Instagram, you'll see the flow I have of everything. But let's say for March 1st, I will most likely talk about, so we're on the 27th today. The 28th, I'm gonna talk about, we have the web design process, we have aesthetic video with a motivating quote, and then on the 29th, let me fix that, we will talk about some cool sites to find inspiration. And this will be a photo, this will be a text graphic, so this one will be a photo. So I think on March 1st, which is a Friday, since I know that Fridays typically are when people are not really paying attention too much, but also maybe they are interested since right now it's kind of like tax season. I have a tax podcast going up on Thursday. So I think what we can do on this day is tax podcast clip. That's perfect. And we'll just do YouTube clip again. Actually, let's make another content pillar called podcast clip. Perfect. And content pillars are nice to know because you can change up what it is you're talking about and just pay attention to like the pillars that you're touching on. So we have a tax podcast clip, which I mentioned this will be a photo. So I'll have to find something for that. And then after tax podcast clip, so this is going to be a Monday. I think that we could talk about, so this is typically when I'll go to my phone and I will look at which content recently performed like the best. So I'll usually just kind of go to my feed, see which one people are most interested in. I also sometimes will go into the comment section and see what people are asking, just to get an idea of like what people want to know and, you know, build content off of that. So I'm thinking that I could do some content that's revolved around, I think actually content that I've seen done really well on my profile is mini vlogs. So I think I'll do a little mini vlog since it's been a really long time since I've done that. And we call this content pillar vlog and just like taking them with me through my day and just like showing them what it is that I do for work and stuff. So that means that on either Friday or this week, I should be filming some clips of my day. Um, so mini vlogs do take a little more time, but I have noticed that people find those very interesting. And then for this one, I'm just gonna say answer question from comments and like business tips. And then for three seven, which is a Thursday, I will most likely make a post, like a motivation post, make it an aesthetic looking video. I just feel those do really well also lately. So I definitely wanna do that. And then I might even just post how to create brand guideline another YouTube clip because I'm getting two short form clips from my video editors. So I can either do that or if I feel like I talked about that too much, I can show a client example work, which is basically me just showing a video of the work I created for my client. So I'll include an example of that right here. But that is kind of the mental process I go through to plan my content and Typically, it works really well. It's super easy to go in here, make those content pillars make sense, 
and then also having a place to write those captions because I felt like for a long time I was using my notes on my iPhone which worked well, but it would get lost in the sauce. I didn't have a place to go reference that. It was just like, I would create a new note every time and it just got really messy. So I actually have the Airtable app on my phone and I'm able to go copy and paste the caption when I'm ready to post. So it makes it very easy. I'm also able to download those cover photos that I make. So it's a seamless process, but I wanna make those cover photos with you guys. So let's do it. So I just opened up Canva. I know that might come to a surprise for some of you, but I typically use Canva to plan out my social media content because it's so fast and easy. And I typically don't like to spend a ton of time on my cover photos. I just want it to make sense and I want it to look nice. And that's about it. So I have a cover photo area right here. I have 110 cover photos in here that I've been using in the past. I kind of want to create a new one with you guys today because it's a big file. I also have this one here with the text based, like the graphic cover photos. It's an easy way to have all of my colors in there from my color palette, my branding, my fonts. It just makes it a bit easy to plug in what it is the title is of the video. So I have all of this in here. This typically is what I would do when it came to using my social media manager. It just helped a lot to have her go in here and change the title to what she thought worked best. But now I'll be doing this and it's honestly pretty easy. So I have all of this in here. It's a really, really big file. I think this one has, yeah, 48 pages, I think. And then on my graphic one, this is a big, big folder of 110 cover photos, but it makes it so easy. So. I'm gonna go reference, I know you guys can't see this, but I have my Airtable open on one side just so I can see the post that I have to create. So we have the tax podcast clip. That's really hard to say really fast, but this is going to be, like I mentioned, a photo, cover photo. So for the tax podcast, I'm thinking something similar to this graphic here. I know it's taking a minute to load. And I have a lot of photos on my phone that I feel match my feed, that are aesthetic, but I will typically go to the app called Tezza. I love this app for editing photos. It makes them look really aesthetic, really nice. And I've been using this for my photos. So I want to maintain the same aesthetic throughout the feed. I also have used the app called ISM, I-S-M. I think it's really nice for also editing photos and stuff. So I think what I want to do is go find some pictures that I think will match like a tax based post vibe. So probably like a desk or something aesthetic like that. And I do pay for an aesthetic stock library. So I might even go find a picture in there, but I do have enough, I think photos of my desk. So I'm gonna go find that really quick and we'll come right back to this. Okay guys, so I actually have a folder of images from when I worked with my social media manager, we put all of these like photos that I felt could be used on stories or for cover photos into an album on my phone. So I think actually we can find something in here to work for the tax podcast. So I just transferred over this. I think it's nice and minimal, um, but I'm thinking I will also transfer something like this of myself, like a selfie. Cause I like to have my face in some of the cover photos so they know like who's behind the brand. Um, so we can do that one. Possibly. That one would work. That one would work. So I'm just kind of transferring over pictures that I feel will be beneficial um, to like tax kind of topics. And then also referring to my air table, we're going to need a picture for um, just like answering questions. So I'll probably just use pictures from my photo shoot for that one. And then motivation, which I think we can use a really cool picture for that, that I already have. So to find that, the only issue is since I dyed my hair red, it's a little bit tougher to find like pictures with my hair red. I'm actually getting new photos taken soon partially for that reason, because I don't see myself going back to black hair for a while. Um, but honestly, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, guys. People just want helpful content. 
and that's truthfully like all that really matters. So I think I have a good amount of content. So I'm going to airdrop this to my computer and then we will go back to my computer and I'll show you how I add that text on top and make it look really nice for my feed. Okay. So I just dragged in those photos that I want to use. So the first topic is tax tips for small businesses. I like to keep it short, sweet. Don't want it more than like two lines at most. Let's do small business owners and something like that. And then typically I will see how this color combo looks with the photo I want to use. I'm going to drag this one in, maybe something like that, or we can even make it like right on top of my hand. That even looks kind of cool. So yeah, just kind of like playing around with how I feel this might look on my feed. And I do have that tab on Airtable. If I want to see exactly how it's going to look on my feed, I can use that as well. But let's just have that there. So we're going to use that one. And then I think I'll also make one that's all about, let's see, answer a question from the comments. So I need to know exactly which question I'll be answering, but I think it has to do with design questions. So I'm gonna drag this one in and let's just say, I'm pretty sure I had a question about design a website. So I'm gonna check and see the question that I saw come through. Okay, so there's a question that says, do you do sketches like you did here when making websites? I did that when creating my inquiry form and it helped me so much to visualize it. So I have that question. I also have what software are you using for one of the iPad video reels I made. So I think I'll answer that first question on sketching a website and I'll show them exactly how I will be sketching it out and like what I do to make that happen. So that's a good one. And then we can also do a cover photo for the one that is all about motivation. So these are always easy pictures to find because I have that brand photo shoot where she took pictures like this for me. And I think those are perfect for motivation, but also maybe something like this, like a selfie would be really simple too. I think I'll say growth takes time. I feel like I haven't had like a natural, just me cover photo in a while. And I'd rather do that than like the perfectly photo, photo shoot ones. I think sometimes the more relatable you are, the more like relatable it is. So let's do something like that. Growth takes time. And I like to sometimes underline those important words. And let's see, this is size 42 font. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Do something like that. And sometimes I will even open up my Instagram to just kind of view what it is I have going on right now. So I'm not like repeating a bunch of things. So let's open that up and see reels. I like to go to the reels tab and then see, yeah, like this one I said, it's crazy what can happen in just a year. So I don't want it to be too similar to that. So I think I could change up the coloring of it as well if I, if I feel like that's needed. I do like a green and white if I wanted to, or I like the red and white too, but we just had that one. So let's do like that. And if this photo is not like, you know, I'm not feeling it or anything, then I can always change it out. But I think I also want this to kind of curve within Canva here. It's so easy to do that. So let's kind of curve it. Yeah, like something like that is cool. I might not even need a background for it, to be honest. It'd be kind of cool if it was just like floating there. Growth takes time. Or we can say consistency is key, which is something I've mentioned many times in this video. So we can do that. Perfect. Okay, so we have page 109, 105, and 106 that I need to download. So I'm going to do that real quick. I download it as a PNG. I'm going to do 10. And then we're also gonna to wanna to do 105 and 106. So let's download those. And then I'll go bring them back into my Airtable. And then we will work on the video content, which I probably won't show that whole process or this video would be so long. But let's go organize it into my Airtable and see how that works. Okay, so those pictures downloaded really fast. It's also nice because I don't always have to save these on my phone and my phone has way too many photos right now. It's ridiculous. So it's kind of nice to not have to worry about saving these to my phone and airdropping them right now. So I just drag it into this little section here and it uploads it and it just makes it so 
easy and so simple. And then I can see the pattern of things that I have going on. So I know what pieces of content to create. So we have those loading in here. My internet's kind of slow today, so that might take a minute. And then for these other ones, those are where I would create the actual text graphic, just like how this one is. So yeah, something like this is so easy to design on Canva. So that is what I would do for all the other posts. I would do like a mini vlog one, brand guideline one, and then I would have all of my cover photos, everything done for the week. So it makes it so easy to follow and so helpful. 10 minutes later and I finished creating all of the cover photos. So social media content planning takes a while, but knowing that I have a week's worth of content just gives me so many hours back in my day during the week. So I recommend doing this just so you have the cover photos and stuff. When it comes to the captions, when it comes to the, like the meat of the content, it's okay to like do it on the same day if you work well like that. But I do have all of my content in here now. So I'm gonna show you guys my screen because there is a really cool way to see how this will look when, if you wanted to see like the aesthetic of the feed and everything. So I wanted to show you guys that real quick in Airtable. So as you can see, I have all the cover photos here. So to make an aesthetic looking feed and to see how it would look, you could go over down here to creating a Kanban view, which I just did called Post Aesthetic. And basically what you could do is filter it out by adding a condition to like the post date. So if we wanted to do that, we could do is within this calendar month. So we could do it that way. We could also do it this calendar week. You can also do is on or before. You can do exact dates if you wanted is one week from now. You could do that. So there's many ways to see the way your feed will look. I'm going to do, let's do is within the next eight days. There we go. So now we can see how my feed will look for the next eight days. Just, cause, just gives you like a general little idea. Uh, this I still need to make, which will be a graphic and also this one as well. But this will kind of just show you like how it looks and stuff. If you like shrink the page, you can see it side by side like that. So I love Airtable because it allows me to have these different views and to see all that. One other thing I wanted to show you though real quick is how to organize your Canva because I'm not very good about this, but this will help you as well when it comes to like repurposing your content and just making it easy when it comes to organizing your stuff for the week. So I'm gonna show you real quick within my Canva here, you can create folders. So I started creating this for like my client brand strategies and my clients themselves to have their photos within one folder. But if I wanted to create a new folder for all of my cover photos, I could do that by creating folder, graphic, cover, photos, or we could just say social media. And then we could say continue. And basically you can click on that, add designs you already have existing. So I already have this one here, so we can move it into this folder. And then I can also add another design. Let's go to, so actually if you wanted, you can even just go back to your Canva and I can click on this one here and move it to a folder like that. So I'm trying to organize myself like this so that I'm able to navigate through my Canva and plan this stuff out in a really seamless way so I'm not wasting time trying to find things. So it makes it really easy to do it that way. Now I have both of these in here. I'm actually gonna name this Cover Photos and we're gonna call this Real Cover, which I already have. I don't know why it's saying YouTube, but we can say real color, cover photos, all color combos. So I love that. It makes it so easy and so seamless. Now, when it comes to actually filming the content, I get the question, how is it that I create a video like this? And that is, I use my professional camera. So I have a DSLR camera and I also have a vlogging camera. I know that seems extra, but I like to have my vlog camera as something that I'm not afraid to like throw in my bag, take on the go. So I use a Canon G7X for that. Before the videos that are really high quality, I'm using my Nikon Z50, which is what I film all my YouTube videos on. And I'll just, 
either tilt it that way or I'll have my video editors basically create short form content out of my long form content. So a lot of repurposing, a lot of using what I already have and a lot of making sure that I capture clips of me working. So like after I film my YouTube videos, I typically turn the camera so that it's vertical and I just do a quick little video of me just sitting here working and then add text on top of that. So it really doesn't take that much time, but I try to make sure to remember to do that every time. All right, you guys, those are all my tips for how to organize and plan out my social media. I hope you enjoyed doing it with me. I'm glad I got some work done while doing this, but I really hope that this was helpful to you. If it was, I'd appreciate it so much if you gave my video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will see you guys in my next video.